You know, when Digitas started the new fronts 11 years ago, it was really basically to say to our clients, you're not paying enough attention to digital. There's a lot going on here and you should take a look at it before you just go spend 75 cents of every dollar on television. So it was really directly an answer to the TV upfronts and a chance for us to say to our clients, pay more attention to what's happening in digital. Obviously that is not something we have to do anymore. And as, as, as the industry has evolved this with us into a, into a marketplace, the role of the publishers is clear. They come in and they talk about their offerings, what's happening, what's new with them, and what opportunities that creates for clients. They're basically selling, and that's what they should be doing. And we decided that for Digitas as the only agency that presents within the new fronts, we have to set ourselves apart. What is the reason for us to still be doing our own presentation? And it's not selling, it's thought leadership. And so we try to be really provocative and to bring forward themes and topics that we think our audience needs to care about. We've always tried to kind of um, uh, do things that have the potential to be somewhat controversial, not, not controversy for the sake of controversy, but to spark the important debates. So two years ago, our theme was skip ads. And we essentially, as an ad agency, stood on stage and told our, our clients, stop making ads and stop shoving them down people's throats, tell stories that are worthy of their time. This year, we're calling it the boycott new front. And the idea is really that, you know, in an age of interruptive advertising, a brand could say whatever it wanted. It didn't have to be timely or topical necessarily. It didn't necessarily, it could just be two pizzas for five ninety nine. dollars But in an, when you want people to interact with stories, which is something they can choose to spend time with or not, you have to be relevant to them. And being relevant to them, we believe right now means tackling some of the bigger social, political, cultural issues that are really, you know, coming to the fore right now in our society. So there's this idea that brands are becoming activists and almost have to, even the ones that don't want to are finding. Now, this doesn't always mean controversy. It could be something as, as, as potentially controversial as Dick's Sporting Goods you know, pulling, uh, you know, changing the way it sells guns and saying directly, you know, we sold a gun to this kid and it's not the gun he used, um, but it could have been. And so we have the CMO of Dick's Sporting Goods coming on stage to talk about that. But it can also be a company like REI, which we have coming on stage, which basically just told people, you know, hey, maybe instead of getting up from the Thanksgiving dinner table and going to elbow people out of your way at the local Walmart, maybe like, stay at the table with your family and go for a hike the next day. Now that wasn't necessarily controversial, but that was just a brand living its own values. So I guess at the end of the day, we're not saying to brands, you have to jump in and, and pick sides in the culture wars necessarily, but we are saying you have to stand for something these days. Your audience expects it. People want to deal with brands that, whose values align with theirs. We're always looking at you know, issues with our clients, like how, how are new technologies transforming the way stories are told, things like, AR and VR and AI obviously being, you know, very strong examples right now. Uh, but it's never again, it shouldn't be about doing them for the sake of doing it. It shouldn't be let's do AR because, you know, everyone's doing AR or buzzing about it. It should be how can we use this in a smart way. So we, we've done a, some AI bot work with HPE, one of our clients in the last year, that really worked for them because it's using a, a bot to learn more and more about the, the people that the bot is conversing with. And basically you're, you're qualifying leads by doing that. So we're always looking at what are the new ways that storytelling you know, is, is, is being transformed and then how is it appropriate for an individual uh, you know, brand to deal with that. But I think the, the heart of it really has to begin with what is the story that you as a brand have to tell that is worthy of someone's time. What, and that, that goes beyond what do you make or what do you do into what role do you play in people's lives and how do you tell that story? And I think we always start there and then everything else becomes what's, what's the story to tell, where are the places we're gonna tell it, what is the tone we're gonna tell it in, all of the rest of it kind of flows from helping the brand find its why. We like to bring in speakers who are outside of the ad business per se and outside of doing, you know, we, we want to bring voices forward that our audience isn't normally going to hear from and, and talk about how the things they're doing might apply for our clients. So for this year, a lot of it is not just how are brands reacting to all of the social, cultural, political upheaval out there, but, but how are storytelling, how is it going to change storytelling of all kinds? So that the filmmaking, music, you know, uh, all of these things that are affected when, when society goes through these kinds of changes. So we have, for example, Jody Cantor, who just won a Pulitzer Prize, uh, shared in a Pulitzer Prize for uh, her coverage of the Harvey Weinstein scandal in the New York Times. 
Um, but we also have the New York Times CEO talking about the Truth Matters campaign that they've done and why they as a brand felt that they had to actually remind people that there is such a thing as objective truth and it matters. We have Nola Weinstein of Twitter, the cultural head of Twitter, who basically created the uh, We're Here movement, um, which, which started as a way to uh, uh, address the fact that there were no female keynote speakers at CES this year, and then you know turned into a political movement. We have the founders of the Time's Up um, movement out of out of Hollywood, um, and you know so really, and, and a lot of that discussion is not just about Time's Up as a movement, but about how those people and others are going to bring forward different kinds of voices in the stories that they tell. So Jordan Levin, who runs Awesomeness TV. We'll talk about, you know, they, they were very apolitical in all of their programming, and then they did a concert recently for the March for Our Lives. And, and Jordan will say that he feels that they have to care about the things that their audience cares about. Or Sarah Hardin, who's building Hello Sunshine with Reese Witherspoon as a way to give more women and women's stories a voice that they don't think has been heard loudly enough in society.